One of the most difficult aspects of shooting the night sky and landscape is actually editing the images. We often marvel at all the images we see online, but how on earth do we make our images look like those? So I've decided to put a series of videos together to help you better understand how I go about this very important part of Milky Way shooting. Now, I do already have a lot of videos which cover various aspects of post-processing, and I'll certainly be referencing those as we go along. So let's get onto our first image. Okay, well, I'd like to show you our first image we're going to be looking at. This is straight out of camera. You can see it was shot with the 20 millimeter F1.8 lens. This is a Nikon Z6 camera at F1.8, 15 second shutter speed at ISO 6400. This is a single exposure shot. And so I wanna show you what I would do with this just as a single shot. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit of light painting in the foreground. And other than that, I've shot it wide open at F1.8 because I wanted to get as much of that sky in as I could. And I think 15 seconds at ISO 6400 is about the right exposure time for that. So first thing I normally do with my images, and I'll do it on this one as well, is to go down to my uh, lens correction. It's already got uh, this particular camera and lens has a built-in lens profile correction, but I tick it anyway, just because it's a habit I've got into. Also remove chromatic aberration, I always tick that. Secondly, I go up here to the noise reduction and in Lightroom, this is under uh, the detail tab. You can see it there. So I'll increase the luminance to about 30 and the contrast also to about 30. On this particular camera, I typically push the color noise reduction up to about 50. You don't have to do that on every camera. Just I've noticed on this particular uh, camera, it helps. That's all, not a problem. Okay, let's go up, up to the top. And uh, here, uh, one of the other things I sometimes do is add a little bit of magenta tint, just a little bit. So we'll see how that comes up. Uh, that's to do with the just the color that's built into the camera and probably just something that I, I like, to be honest. It's not necessarily something that's set in concrete. Uh, now what I'm going to do here is brighten this image up a little bit. So I'm going to plus about, let me see, about 80 roughly. Yeah, about, about 80 I think is, it, is where I want it. Uh, and then I'm going to drop the highlights. So that has a, 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 the effect of doing the opposite to increasing the exposure. But I, I want to drop some of the highlights out of this area here. I usually do actually increase the whites a fraction and that also increases the overall, I guess, brightness of this image. Now, sometimes the image can look a bit too bright, so we'll just play with that and see how we go. Touch of vibrance in here, just about plus 16. I don't want to do too much. Um, okay, now I'm going to add some dehaze into this. Let's just see what that does. Oh, you can see straight away what that's doing is adding a fair bit of contrast into the scene. Now, it's mainly affecting the sky, and that's good because I don't really want to darken this foreground at all. But let's just uh, go full screen on that and have a look and see what it looks like. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, I'm not intending to take this image out of Lightroom. I'm just going to do all of the editing here in Lightroom. Um, one thing I might do with that dehaze, what it tends to do is add a little bit of blue, which is not always a bad thing, but in this case, I'm just gonna warm that up a fraction. So I shot this at ice, uh, a white balance of 4,000 Kelvin. I've just bumped that up to about 4,250. And you can see, look, overall, I think that looks pretty good. Now, because I shot this lens wide open at f1.8, there is a little bit of vignetting around the outside, but you know what? I like that. I don't mind that at all. But one thing I will do, is just boost this foreground a fraction. So to do that, I'm gonna use a mask. So go to the mask tool here, and it's gonna ask me what I wanna do. I just wanna simply brush in. Uh, and what I'm gonna brush in is the touch of exposure. Let's try about plus 20, and a little bit of clarity. So about plus 36. And you can see by using the mouse wheel, I can adjust the size of that. So here we go, I'm just brushing in on that part of the foreground just a little bit maybe a, a little bit on that tree and I don't even mind a little bit on the on the water in the background just to give it a bit of oomph 
okay and you can see what happens if I increase the exposure what happens there um, done let's have a look at that now now overall that is a pretty good image single shot not too complicated fairly easy to shoot remember this is all focused to infinity and so with that in mind if I zoom in on this foreground part here you will notice it's not quite in focus at f1.8 because it's a little bit too close to the camera but overall not too bad so what I want to do now is show you an alternative to this image so what I shot was about 10 images of the sky you can see them here these were shot at f1.8 also only 10 second shutter speed 20 mil focal length at ISO 6400 I shot 10 one after the other exactly the same exposures and you can see what I've done here uh, plus 90 minus 7 plus 21 they're, they're uh, arbitrary I, I, I just come look at those based on the image itself no noise reduction although I did bump up that color noise reduction I've also done the remove chromatic aberrations left the white balance pretty much where it is uh, as per shot and what I'm going to do is stack these so we've got 10 of those I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go to uh, export and I'm going to export these out of here call them uh, tree sky stack and I'm going to take these as TIFF files as you can see there into Sequator so that's the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to export that and we'll wait and see we're going to go to Sequator and here's my shortcut double click on that by the way Sequator is a Windows only program it's free software which is fantastic and it's designed to do one thing only and that is to stack multiple images to create one uh, image from that stack in this case at 10 so we go to star images at the top double click that go to the folder where we saved it to now I can't stress enough how important it is to remember where you stored all of these particular um, images and you I've got them all here and I'm going to open them and you can see them all here it will show one image and that will be one of the ones in the middle of the stack now I'm going to go right down to output double click output and it's simply going to ask me where I want to save it so I'll save it back in the same place where it came from and that's all we need so we'll go there all right from here we just go down to the down the list first one here composition aligned stars I want to do that uh, I want to freeze the ground very important down here click freeze ground and um, because I want to keep everything aligned now I'm going to click on sky region and check irregular mask and then all I'm going to do is by holding down the mouse actually create a pretty rough mask around these trees now it's a it's a bit of a process to do this it doesn't take that long this is a dead tree so all I've got to really do is try and get it roughly as best as I can in amongst uh, the branches and you can see the the process is not that difficult but it does take a little bit of time you don't have to be too pedantic in fact to be honest you can't be too pedantic because you can't zoom in on the image you can only do your best to get around these leaves so I'll just fast forward this process so I'm not boring you by showing you exactly every step of the way and we'll come back in a minute okay you can see what I've done there now it's not perfect and it never will be perfect in this program it's impossible to get right in amongst all of these trees but one trick I've learned over the years is for example if I'm trying to isolate this skinny branch here sometimes what I will do is actually rub it out completely like that and then rub it back in by holding down the right mouse button and then just going back in gently as close as I can and rubbing it in you can see I can get a lot closer by doing that especially in some of these areas than by just a simple uh, rub in and rub out if you know what I mean so anyway we are just about ready to go now you'll notice all of these other settings here I haven't done anything they're all turned off one is set to auto and that's just the normal default setting so I'm now going to press start and this doesn't take very long and that is actually now aligning all of those layers and creating one final TIFF file and so there we have it it took about three minutes to do that and let's just have a look and see what we've got there we go there's our image which is now been saved as a TIFF file we're going to come back to that in a minute let's go back to Lightroom so what we've done we began here in Lightroom 
took our 10 images here, took them into sequator to stack as one. Now, why do we do that? We do that because it reduces the noise. Each image at these high ISOs is pretty noisy. So by having 10 of them and stacking them in the program sequator, we reduce the noise significantly. What I'm going to do now is take you to some light painted images I took, and you can see them here. Uh, now these were shot at F5, so I've stopped down the aperture at ISO 500. So the, the aperture and the ISO have changed considerably. And these are shot at 20 mil focal length as well. I have not moved the camera or tripod between any of these shots. 15 second shutter speed. Now you can see I've done some adjustments here, increased the brightness a little bit, bit of clarity. I've also done lens profile corrections, bit of noise reduction as well, but that's it. I've pretty much left them as is. And I shot about five of these. You can see there, you can see my light there in the foreground where I've lit the ground. Uh, you can see a few other bits and pieces where I've lit the tree. Now I won't necessarily use all of these, but I've got them there just in case. So what I'm going to do is select these images and I need to go off to Photoshop because I can't do the blending of all of these images in Lightroom. It won't let me. Photoshop is more suited to that task. So I'm gonna right click on one of these images, click edit in, open as layers in Photoshop and off we go. Okay, so we've opened all of those as layers here in Photoshop, and this is every single one. But where is our sky? Well, we've got to go and get that. So I'm going to go up to File, Open, and then I'm going to navigate to the folder where we saved our image before in Sequator. There we go. So we've got that on a separate, it's opened up in a separate window. So I'm going to select it, uh, Control A. Control C is to copy it and then Control V to paste it. And it's coming on top of the other layers. Now you can do all of that from up here, edit, copy and paste, etc., just like any other document that you would use. Now I wanna put this sky layer on the bottom of the stack. So let's do that. Bring it right down to the bottom. Now what I wanna do is show you how I'm gonna get those foreground layers to show out. So I'm gonna select them all by holding down Shift and clicking the top and bottom and simply changing the blend mode from normal to lighten. And suddenly you can see all of those layers, you can see through all of the dark pixels and all of these left remaining are the light pixels. That's what the lighten blend mode does. And that's looking pretty good, I think, so far. But we've got a little bit to go because I wanna get rid of some of these areas in here. You can see some light painting torches. There'll be a lot of stars in there, which I wanna get rid of as well. So let's do that to do that. I'm going to turn off all the layers except the top one and the bottom one. Now, the only reason I need that bottom one is because if I turn that off, I can't really see the outlines very well. So what I'm going to do is turn it back on, but lower the opacity down to about 50% or thereabouts. And now I can see both. I can see the outline of the tree. And you'll see when I add a layer mask, which I'm going to do now, this little square down the bottom adds a layer mask. You can see it's come up as a white square. Now, if I paint black, over the top of that white by using the paintbrush tool, which is over here. That's the paintbrush tool. Um, you will notice uh, that I'm rubbing out part of this image. Now, layer masks are quite reversible. So if I was to paint on the actual image, it's not gonna work. So I can erase it, it will be fine, but I can't get it back again. But using a layer mask, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that I can paint white back in there and get it back again. So it's fantastic. So let's go up to the brush. I'm going to select a hard brush and a reasonably large one. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually rubbing out. This is actually a little bit like what I did in Sequator. The, the, the difference here in Photoshop is that I can zoom in more on the image and it, it can be quite a, a lot more easier to do. But nevertheless, I'm going to do this rub out as much of those stars as I can by using this hard brush. Now, it's gonna be a hard brush all the way through this exercise. So uh, you'll just have to bear with me while I do this. And what I'm going to do is fasten up this process. I don't need you to sit here watching me do this, but you can get the picture and it doesn't have to be exact or perfect. All right, so you can see what I've done here. Now I've actually rubbed out a lot of this foreground, the tree. And the reason I did that was because it wasn't actually lit as the foreground and therefore, I don't need to try and isolate every single twig and every single branch because there was no lighting on it anyway. 
and it's just going to be a silhouette which I'll just retain from the background and you can see I've got in pretty close here uh, you can see I've got my brush nice and tight but it doesn't matter so much because what you're going to notice is when I enable the sky layer which I'll just do now just to show you what this looks like properly because remember that's still on a opacity of only about 50 percent if i make it 100 percent suddenly look at that it looks fantastic you wouldn't even know that there was any mask on there so that's really really good so what i'm going to do now is go down on each of these layers and i'm simply going to open them up and copy that layer mask this saves me having to do that again so hold down alt drag it down next one hold down alt drag it down next one same thing and you can see all the light painting that I've done is basically on the closer foreground, not so much on the trees in the lake. And because of that, it's a lot easier to mask all of this out. Okay, so you can see what's happened here. Now, by turning these on and off, you can see the bits that are lit and the bits that are not lit. And you can see what areas I need to work on a little bit more just to get rid of the torch, etc. in the foreground. So once more, I'm just going to turn them all off. And in fact, I can probably turn off uh, the bottom layer as well because I don't need to be able to reference that just go back into my mask I'm going to make it a soft brush this time just to make it blend a little bit better as you can see there make the brush a little bit bigger and sim simply rub it out you see what happens there it's it's going into the background but that doesn't matter go to the next one you can see what I've got to do here select the mask and I've just got to go in there and get rid of that torch next one well there's nothing in there I need to get rid of at this stage next one and you can see there, I've got to select the mask, come over here, rub that bit out. All right, and the bottom one, let's just see what we've got there. Yeah, nothing. So once I enable all the layers again, you can see the complete picture. And it's not too bad. Now, what I probably would su suggest here, this part of the ground is a bit overlit. So I'm just going to look at the, the areas there that are lighting that part of the ground. So that one and that one. So what I'm going to do is just taper that light in. And the way I'm going to do that is click on that mask there, get myself a larger brush. I'm going to feather it in something like this. You can see how I'm, I'm taking some of the, the heat, if you like, out of that part of the image. And I think it looks better for it. Now that other one, where was that? Uh, this one here. I reckon we could probably do the same on the bottom of that. Now to do that, I've got to make my image smaller. So go like that. Click on the layer. Where is it? It's that one. Click on the layer mask and then get a nice big brush. Make my brush nice and big and just feather it in. See how that's, that's darkening the edges of the layer? And I think it works better. It's not so hot. And now when I zoom in on the image again, you can see I think it looks better now what I'm going to do whilst I'm here I'm going to put all of these foreground layers into a group the reason I'm going to do that because I want to work on this bottom layer a little bit and there's a lot of images here sometimes they can get a little bit crowded so I'm going to select them all by holding down shift on the keyboard drag it down to this little square down here which says group so it's called group one now inside that group all of the layers are still intact with the layer masks they're just they're just organized a bit better now, one thing you will notice when you create a group, the blend mode changes to pass through. Now, I don't want it to be pass through. I want it to be lightened like it was. So I'm going to go back to lighten, click on that, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, now let's turn that off. We're now on the bottom layer. What I'm going to do here is duplicate that layer. So I'm going to layer, duplicate, just as a copy, just so I've got a reference from where we've come from and where we're going to. Um, now, what I'm going to do here, there's a, a lot of things I could do here, but for this tutorial, it's going to be simple. I'm going to do many more tutorials showing you some more complicated things to do with the sky, but this one isn't one of them. So I'm going to go to curves and do a bit of an adjustment with these curves. I think I'll just increase the exposure a little bit. So just by dragging the whole thing up, that's good. Um, and I'm going to go to layer, merge visible. What that's going to do is blend those two into one layer. The others are unchecked. If they were checked, they would all blend into one layer and I do not want that to happen. So we're back on this layer again. Uh, this time I'm gonna to go to curves again. And this time I think I will just do a, a, a slight S curve. So I'll pull down that part of the curve and increase that one just a little bit. 
just to give some more contrast into that sky. I think it looks pretty good. So let's have a look at that. This is the before and after. So you can see it's adding even more, darkening the edges a little bit, but the actual Milky Way is the part I'm most concerned about. Now, if you're worried about part of your image being too dark there, for example, let me just show you. See down here that the water's getting darker. So what I can do there is click on my layer mask, go over to my brush tool once again, get a, a fairly smallish or a bit smaller than that, and just rub rub this. See, I'm actually rubbing the effect off of the layer mask on the foreground because the foreground I don't want to be affected in the same way. So I can do it quite easily using this layer mask. So that looks pretty good. There you can see I've just done a bit with the sky. It's not a lot, but it's enough. So let's just go up to layer, merge visible on that. Now what I'm going to do is go up to filter, camera raw filter. And I just want to add a little bit of effect here and we'll just see what it comes up with. This is basically a very similar look to what Lightroom gives us. So I'm going to add some dehaze into, into the image and I like that. That's, that's giving a, a bit more contrast to that sky once again. Yeah, that's good. Exposure a little bit up, I think. Drop the highlights because the highlights are starting to push out too far. Maybe a little bit of contrast. I like it. I really, really do. One thing that might happen though, by adding that dehaze, I may actually have added some noise. So I'm gonna to go to the detail tab uh, and add just a little bit of noise reduction in here as well. Maybe a bit of color noise as well. All right, click okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. So if I now enable my group, which is my foreground, you can see what we've done there. That, that doesn't look bad. Now, if I go from Let's just get rid of that and back to there. That's where we started and that's where we got to. It's not a big difference because remember, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, but I actually really do like it. So what I'm going to do now is flatten this image. So I'm going to go to layer, flatten image. It asks me if I want to discard the hidden layer, which is the original. I say yes to that. And there we have our shot. I'm going to go back to Lightroom by just clicking out of Photoshop. So once we get back to Lightroom, we can just look at this overall image and just have a bit of a think about what we can do to improve it a little bit further. I think it needs to warm up a bit, just personally. So I'm just gonna grab the, the temperature control and just push it up a little bit. Also, I think I'll add some more dehaze to that sky, but what I'm not going to do is apply that as a global setting. I'm going to actually create a mask and uh, I could press select sky but I'm just gonna brush it in over the top of the trees. So I'm gonna uh, select dehaze. Let's go about 33, we'll see what that does. And just brush it over the sky. You can see what's happening there. Now I didn't wanna put it on the foreground because the foreground doesn't need it. It's only the sky I wanna work on here. It doesn't really matter over the top of those silhouetted trees. That's not gonna cause me any problems either, I don't think. I'm just trying to push that sky out a little bit more. But remember, this is a simple edit. I'm not trying to make it too complex and too much in your face. I pretty much like it the way it is. Okay, when we're finished there, um, you can see, it, by the way, if I push more dehaze, it will really punch that sky out. But I do run the risk of adding a lot more noise if I do that. So I'm just gonna press done. And you can see there now, that's what we've got with our final image. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, the foreground is nice and crisp. So if we zoom in on that foreground, you can see much sharper than our image, which was a single. In fact, what I'll do, I'll show you both of these images together. So I'm gonna select both of those images, go up to view and compare. There we go. So we've got both of the images. This one on the right-hand side is the original single shot. That's not too bad. Let's zoom in. Here we go. And you can see the difference. This is the stacked image on the left, much, much sharper than the single image on the right hand side. And that is the single reason why we do stacking. You see that tree there is beautifully lit. You see that the ground in the foreground has detail. You can see color in the grass. You can't see anything in this one. It's just a bit of a mess really. Um, but overall, when you look at the image as a, as a whole, it's not too bad, not too bad at all. So I think that's what we're looking at, and I'm pretty pleased with the outcome 
with this. So I'll look forward to catching you in our next episode. As we go, we'll progressively look at more complex editing uh, parts of our Milky Way images. But for now, I think this one will do just as it is. So that's our first image done and dusted. And I really hope you enjoyed following along. Stay tuned because I have a lot more of these videos coming your way. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. So you guys take care.